In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create movable fire sources in Niagara Fluids. So something where the emitter might be moving around your scene and might need the fire to be properly updated and calculated for that. And in addition to that, we'll go over how to add collisions with meshes and also how to have those meshes that it collides with to also push around the smoke and fire if they are to move as well. So to begin a brand new blank scene and go to edit plugins and make sure that you have your Niagara fluid plugin loaded. So once you've confirmed that that is loaded, we can go into our content browser, right click, create a new Niagara system and create a new system from a template or behavior example. I'm gonna scroll down and choose the grid 3D moving grid fire. And this will be great for creating fire or smoke that has a moving source. So I'll kind of simulate that emitter in world space and properly update it. So if you have a moving source of fire or smoke, that's probably what you're going to want to use. So we'll click finish on that. We'll give it a name. I'm just going to call it FXS, maybe flamethrower or flame, doesn't really matter. And we're going to open this up and we'll see our Niagara system here. And what we're going to do is start making some adjustments. Now, by default, we get this emitting fire, but we're going to change a lot of that. So we're going to go to our grid 3D gas master emitter. We're going to open it up, show all the advanced drop down and settings. And we're going to disable this emission from this sphere source. So we'll go to sourcing. And under grid 3D gas sphere source, we'll disable that. And now we no longer have any emission. So the next thing that we're gonna do is create a fountain emitter. This may seem familiar with our old tutorial of creating a flamethrower. It kind of will be, but this will be updated for 5.2 and it'll be a little bit different. So we're gonna create a fountain emitter. And we're not going to really focus too much on the emission of it or dialing in that in perfectly. We're going to really get to the, the point of this and just get it to emit properly and have it to be a source that we can move around. So now that I have this fountain emitter and we're emitting a bunch of these small little uh, particles that you can see here, we're going to make a couple adjustments. Now, first thing before we can emit fluids from these particles, we have to make sure it's a GPU compute sim, not a CPU compute sim. So I'll click on properties here, change the sim target to GPU compute sim. Now that will be compatible for emitting fluids from. Now, before we can really dive into that, it'd be nice if these particles have collision. So when they hit something like a surface, they bounce off or stick to it much like fuel or kind of gasoline or some fire or fuel source would. So we're going to go to particle update here. We're going to click on the plus. We're going to add some collision. Now we're going to add that collision in here. We're going to change some of the settings on it. So we're going to select collision and we're going to change how it interacts. So you have collision type here. By default is GPU depth buffer. That works fine, but we're going to change it to distance fields. I think that might work a little bit better. And then restitution, when it hits a surface, how much energy does it keep? We're going to set that to zero. So when it hits a surface, these particles will stop and kind of stick to the surface. That's going to be what we want to do so that when they hit an object, when this liquid or this, what we're treating as liquid, these particles hit an object, they stop and stick to it. So let's save this and try that out. So I'm just going to save this, minimize it, add a ball or sphere, add my emitter, and fire a bunch of these particles at that sphere if I can actually position my sphere correctly. There we go. Positioned into place. So now what you can see is those particles hit the sphere and then kind of stop. Now I want them to stick more. So maybe what we can do is make a modification in our fountain setting here, where under solve forces and velocity, we'll, we'll make it so when it hits, when these particles hits or collides on the surface, 
they don't just end up having no velocity, but they completely freeze. They pretty much stop simulating, so they just stick until their life ends. So to do that, what we're going to do is under solve forces and velocity, we're going to go here and click on the arrow for advanced drop down and where it says right to intrinsic properties. If I turn that off, you could see all the particles just stop. They just stick at the base here. So what we're going to do is toggle that off when they collide. So we're going to go in here to where it says right to intrinsic properties. We're going to click on the down arrow. We're going to search for Boolean not operation. We'll add that in. And then for the toggle, so you can see if I toggle this on, they stick, don't do any movement. If I toggle it off, they move. We'll drive that with collision. So we'll click down on that Boolean and type something like collide. And you'll see that there's particles uh, option here. It says has collided and we'll add that. So now what happens if we save this and we take a look at it in our viewport, when those particles hit a surface, they totally stop and stick to it. So that works a little bit better. Remember, these particles are going to drive our fire. So now our fire will collide with objects and stick to it and burn and kind of stay on that object. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we're going to do is emit the volumes from these particles. So going back to our fountain emitter here, underneath our particle update, we're going to add, we're going to add a fluid gas source, may seem familiar from our last video, if you're going in order. And fluid gas source, we emit density, radius, and temperature. That's all fine. We're going to adjust some of those. We're going to set density maybe to something like 0.25, Radius, I'll do a float from curve. Or float from curve, I'll just make the multiplier or scale curve 8. So it goes from 8 to 0. Starts at a radius of 8, goes to a radius of 0 by the end of its lifetime. And temperature, I'll set to 0 0.03 for now. So it's not too bright. It's not too overexposed. That should be okay for now. We might have to change these settings. We're not dialing this in for looks. We're just dialing it in to get something working. So now the next thing we do is go to our grid gas, our grid 3D gas master emitter. We'll go to emitter summary. We'll go under source. We'll enable read particle source. For emitter name, we're going to enter our fountain emitter that we just created. Now, once that's done, we should get our fire emitted from our fountain particles, which we do. So what we can do now, if we look at the bounds of this box, having it at the bottom is not great because if we rotate it, we don't have much room below it to simulate. So we're going to move our emitter to the center of this box or these bounds here. So to do that, we'll go to emitter summary, simulation. We'll set our local pivot to 000. zero, zero. So now it's in the center of that container. We're going to also increase the container size. So I'll click my grid 3D gas master emitter, but actually you can just see it here under user parameters. It's exposed as a user parameter. I want to set the size to a thousand by a thousand by a thousand. And then what we're going to do is go to emitter summary again on our grid 3D gas master emitter, and we're going to add some forces. So under forces, we're going to enable Calculate actor motion force. So if the actor or the emitter moves, it kind of pushes a little bit of velocity into the smoke, into the fire. So we're going to enable that, but we have to set the setting or the multiplier extremely low. Otherwise, it will look really weird. So we'll set it to maybe 0.1. And even that is pretty extreme. Now, finally, what we're going to do is save this, test it out, see what happens and then start to also add collisions with our geometry. So now we have collisions with the particles. So that fire hits that sphere. Maybe I'm just going to rotate some of the lighting around to make it a bit more dramatic and easier to see. So we have my source here, and if I move it, look at this. We can do a moving fire source, and those particles go and stick, and then they continue to burn. That's really cool. Now the problem is if we have our sphere and we move our sphere around, it doesn't push the smoke or fire around. So how can we deal with that? 
Well, you just need to add a tag to your static mesh or your objects. So on this sphere, I'm going to go here to search. I'm going to type tag and look for actor tags. Add a tag called collider. B-O-L-L-I-D-E-R. All lowercase. Now, before that works, we have to go back into our effects system. And in our effects system on our grid 3D gas master emitter, we're going to go to emitter summary. We're going to go to collisions and we're going to enable mesh collisions that will look for that collider tag. And if objects have that collider tag, it will push the smoke and fire around. Now, the very final thing that we're also going to do is maybe disable the rendering of these little fountain dots because that's kind of distracting. So on my fountain, I'm going to go to where it says Sprite Render, turn that off. Now we don't see them. I'll save this. And now we can go test it out. So now if I go here and look, okay, we got our fire and we can, you know, rotate this and it all updates. If our fire source here moves, Kind of all updates and now if we have our ball here our sphere if that moves it also pushes around the smoke and fire as well so now we kind of have everything working as it should or as we expect so very easy to set up moving fire sources if your object moves too fast or this movement is too sudden yes it's going to get a bit steppy and maybe not look the best, or if you move too far like this, it'll get cut off from the bounds of that uh, simulation box. So there are some downsides to it. It's not perfect. This probably will improve over Unreal versions, but for now, it's still pretty good. It works great for if you have uh, sources that need to have some slight movement and that don't need to be perfectly static. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to change the look of the fire, to look better or to look more like a nice flamethrower fire, check out the previous video um, that was for prior versions of Unreal, like Unreal 5. And that goes over a bit more into how you can change the look of this fire, which can all be found under our Grid 3D Gas Master Emitter, under Emitter Summary, Rendering tab. Here you have options for smoke color, Density, density gain, density range, temperature range, all that stuff that will change the look of this actual fire. So that's one way you can adjust things a bit further. But that's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, if you've liked and you learned something new today, uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe. And if you're part of the Patreon, you'll also get access to the PDF of this video, uh, which goes over all the steps we did in this video and a little bit more information. So if you're part of the Patreon, You'll get this PDF available for download. And if you're not part of the Patreon, check it out in the description below. And let me know in the comments below how this turned out for you and what kind of content you would like to see next.